So let's at least try test installing this freshly compiled kernel that maybe we at least achieve something here today. After everything else was already here, a trial and error that didn't achieve much. So kernel copied over here. Let's see if I manually, okay, manually packed it together then tar extract 2010. I think I only packed the kernel and the modules. Um, yeah, only lots of live streams because somehow on this Mac Mini that I salvaged here from our server rack for virtualization of macOS, the Ethernet appears to die, at least this latest Linux somehow. Anyway, so let's see if we can boot. So this two test streams were two broken streams were only due to that. And then the long trial and error looking around here. So this should have two, four, so this is freshly just finished on the data center for uh, 10. Yeah, let's see if that boots. This should have. So what this is, testing is reboot. Let's switch to the P3 frame buffer. So with this, I hope it at least boots. But just the first test because we were still trying to get the CPU reset working. And this could potentially vastly improve here our trial and error, not having to reboot each time we crash the RSX. And, but no idea if we can even reset, but I guess if a game crashes the RSX, I guess the game OS should have some means to reset this. So we have for 2010. Of course, there's always a chance that this doesn't even boot. Ah. Damn it. So when you type here over the edge of 420 10 dist. I guess it could probably can't find VM, what have we done here? VM Linux 420 10. Oh, boot obviously. This is even focused, I hope. But yeah, what size are those monitors? Yeah, he's back. Um, this is 23, I guess it's in the model name. So it's R24, 24 in this. I don't know, I got this from free, for free from a customer. But this is a funny thing, by the way, to tell this story. So this display I picked up for free at a customer of our commercial Mac software. I was there for some support and stuff. And then they had a nice office and everything super awesome there. And they had this in a corner standing and just this day while I was sitting there, they wanted to throw it away and the manage managing director there was like, someone still using this displays because, you know, they only had fancy IMAX and such. And I was looking like, um, yeah. And he probably realized that I had this, yeah, look on my face. And said, you want to keep this display so if you don't need it. So supporting my commercial customer, I took a display home for free. And so no idea, probably also 24 inch, I guess, something like that. And <clears throat> so this kernel still boots. The password here is no PS3 that I don't need to hide it so much from you anyway. So this should be uname. Uh, Unicode, goodness. Yeah, for 2010, compiled just now. And theoretically, this has the code that we just coded and obviously this always has a chance to just crash and burn. 
So the working one is user source. Let's first try the working, test the working one. X driver. And obviously, as we had there some trial and error with all the pointers and stuff, as we do not code this every day, start X. So this should work. This is the old version, I hope, anyway. Just for a quick test it to take a check that this still works. Oh, then this is a logging version, okay, this will take a long time to start. I only want to... I answered this, you, you're guessing 2427? I hope my... My stream is streaming. No, do I have audio check? Audio looks rolling. Zero drop frames. Um, yeah, just a quick test if this reset stuff is doing something that we clobbered together there. And I only was trial and error thing there with this pointer stuff because obviously I don't edit this frame buffer driver every day and then when I come back to this every six months, first I need to get some overview again because I would normally not code, code with static objects and such static variables. That's why I still need to grease this chair, this office chair also gets on my nerves. So yeah, so much to starting this driver with logging, as you see. So it was super clever. Let's disable this for the next run, otherwise we will make the same mistake again. That was in PS3H. Oh no, was it? It was in DMA. Debug slightly funny that this code is from the open source NVIDIA's own that the Novo developer call obfuscated driver and then you have here working on Sony RSX stuff with copyright NVIDIA so um, yeah but coming back to this microkernel stuff and some developer or so criticized me there on, on Foronix where I posted this I guess and he said, no, performance will be awful, complete nonsense, total context switching, CPU cycle wasting. And yeah, maybe I did not do professional research in this area, just some thinking that I think from the security and stability perspective, I would enjoy this or like this or prefer this and think this would be a better architecture. And this is also why I do this light teasing. Oh, we started. So you see this versus logging. It's obviously slow and stuff, so... And, yeah, just a waste of time for this. So now comes the real test. The real test is going to, by the scale, compared. And so now the real test, let's install the not yet working driver. And I guess in the meantime we have established that this RAM in and RAM HT is not it's a not mapped probably and poking there in memory that is not the RAM HT and RAM in instance memory. So more research on that. And this is not working, so make install this. And regarding this microkernel stuff, this is why I also do the S reverge because when I S reverge I wanted to program when I was there in school and couldn't get this to work when we had no means of virtualization and uh, anyway we're just learning to program and teasing this teasing ET4000 just for the reference of one of the first ISA accelerators because we could then um, yeah 24 and because then if because all the X drivers all have different structures for working with DMA. It would also be a really fun thing to have some set of drivers like even ET4000, S Reverge, although yes, it's a D accelerator, but I have documentation and it's working. And maybe even early ATI, I have also not only do I have for free from our basement, from old stuff, you know, recycling bin and, bin and neighbors and friends and such, I have old ATI. Mach 64, I don't know what, and even in the G4 cube is a rage something, or oh, no, I read actually the, yeah, initially, anyway, 
So some old cards and it would actually be cool to make some repository even if it's not a microkernel tomorrow but some code that it's really nicely readable and where the macros and functions and helper functions for DMA ring buffer and such are all the same for early NVIDIA and um, this virgin stuff and you because this the Novo developer calls this code obfuscated. It probably was full with magic numbers before the Novo developer forked this from NV2 XF86 video NV2 Novo. And because they called it obfuscated, I don't have personal experience with this, but they say it, so whatever. So, and um, yeah, would be a cool first start to have also, this would also be nice education, educational code for really readable, nicely, nicely structured. And yeah, then eventually, maybe, if we have 100,000 subscribers, maybe we find enough time and advertising revenue for writing a whole microkernel here for the fun of it. And maybe it will be slow, but at least secure, but whatever. So let's start this. And the point is, so this will also, I have not modified the X driver. This will, of course, crash. I'm only interested to see if with this code we have written a second ago, if we can recover from this GPU hang so right now we have probably yeah, we have a blinking cursor blinking cursor means the frame buffer driver is still running if it would be crashed it would either be black or not blinking so this is a driver that will crash and now the question is do we recover dna hang and the kernel is still alive and no we are still failing then this zeroing did not work then maybe someone needs to that is a pity so with this code we should actually zero this for knobs and reset this pointer by the way do i lock wanted find find mode sync image so the split fails so that's a pity so then this travel code that we coded earlier does not just work that is said then i probably need to ask some friends to dig out their reverse engineered dumps of the hypervisor and tell me what to do with this exception handling to potentially resetting or continuing to execute this RSX. So, but that's really it. Now for today, we have at least established that this tribal stuff does not work in that way. And yeah, another day we need to check the other dev wikis and information of other people and uh, exploit and whatnot because or actually um, also the emulator the p3 emulator to compare how to map this ram ht and ram in because obviously all the games need to use it so it must be possible from game os we just need to figure out how to do this and maybe the p3 emulator is also a great source for this but with this, it's really the end of all the massive live streaming godness today. Tomorrow also we will do something differently again. So that we have other topics to talk about. And as usual, leave in the comments below what you think, what games you find on the internet and any tips and tricks for that. I hope you learned something. At least that all this stuff is time-consuming work. It's a pity that all the geniuses, uh, this Iron Peter and Gaozung and uh, others here who have written this originally, I think was the name. Yeah, anyway, all those people, because this is really a pity that this knowledge was lost. This is really amazing work that they got this to work there through this security vulnerability in the hypervisor before firmware 2.10 really amazing must I, I have no idea how long this took must for sure be months of full-time reverse engineering work there really a work of heroes and here yeah, a pity that if any one of those watches this would be amazing if you drop me a note and share some knowledge because if you have not reverse engineered all of this yourself and need to get into all those bits, bits and pieces and magic numbers it's as you see a huge time consuming trial and error and with that I say thank you also 
everyone for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you like here this uh, improved streaming setup. And yeah, lots of gear purchased us just for this. And long term goal, I said it already, we need here even better studio setup and stuff like this. The problem is the P3 stuff, even for me, is slightly boring. As I said in the earlier stream, I would have actually preferred to do the ET4000 stuff because I have documentation and I for sure would have had acceleration running with that. And this is also slightly frustrating for me to sit here for hours to poke here around in the driver sources and everything and at the end of the day not much more works. Though I'm actually already pretty satisfied that I got this other driver here, this one actually we can, did I compile this just for the completeness, this was this one, user source, I'm actually, and I'm not exaggerating when I tell you to get this old driver to make, uh, to work, make, install, oh, right now we are crashed anyway, but anyway you have seen it on the other videos, this took literally a week to get working with this mostly working to, to deaccelerated state and I did not expect getting this more 3D stuff working again is such so much more getting used to all the bits and pieces and fiddling around there in all those memory maps and magic numbers and as you see here from the magic numbers we have scrolled through this here I hope you understand that this is maybe the Novo developers would have actually had more luck because they know all the magic numbers by heart and have written this already for the desktop cards but getting used to this kind of stuff here, all this TCL RAM in and RAM HT and uh, instantiating of all this NVIDIA Novo magic number godness and mind you here still quite some, okay here some symbolic constants but here all of this and also I wonder if actually this handles here are still somewhere here where magic values for instances, handles, something, object IDs. I wonder if they are still the same in the hypervisor in the meantime, but anyway. Yeah, I guess I probably will compare this with the emulator. Maybe we can make a fun episode of writing a homebrew example thing demo in the emulator, just to getting used to this experience, certainly easier to write with to code against an emulator than the spare metal crashing stuff. Um, can't wait to see the next video. Octane Spark. Yeah. Leave in the comments below what you are interested in most. We have Octane is also difficult and um, Spark. Yeah, leave in the comments below what you would like to see. We also have plenty of other more regular IT stuff to do, not only this P3 fiddling. Maybe also another laptop review. Again, I heard hundred thousands of people are interested watching laptop unboxing and such. But yeah, that's it for today. I hope to see you soon. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe and have a good night or day. And See you next time.